that was about. Well, I found out that the company I worked at, Gila Packard, had a microprocessor deal. A, a Motorola microprocessor, 6800, for 40 bucks. So that was affordable, so I designed the computer for that processor. And then an unknown company starts up selling the best microprocessor, because the latest is usually the greatest and best, and a few more transistors on it, um, the 6502. I looked over its specs compared to the 6800, and it had a bunch of different addressing modes, where the 6800 might have had more calculating instructions. But to me, the addressing modes were much more important. I'd grown up on some of the beauty of the IBM 360, where you could never generate an address. All you could do was add numbers to a register that the operating system gave you that had an address in it. So uh, I liked the 6502 the best, and then they had a show in San Francisco, the Westlawn Show, and you could walk into a room with a $20 bill, put it down on the counter, and get a 6501, or 25 bucks would buy you a 6502, which the only difference is it had a little transistor amplifier in for the clock signal. It was built into the 6502 for five bucks more. And you could just buy it. There was a way to buy it. That was the most important thing of all. So a lot of us from the club went to um, that Westcon show and bought our first microprocessor, the 6502, the start to where we could all build a computer. I seem to remember they had a fishbowl full of chips and you could just pick one out and buy it. <laughs> well, I your own chip. Yeah, and at, at the time, all this time, there was, there was folks in the ivory towers up on the hill, Xerox Park and so forth, working on stuff that a lot of us did manage to get in the back door and see. And it had big full screen bitmap, you know, full page bitmap screens and fonts and uh, ethernet and so forth. And oh my, wouldn't it be nice to have this? But we couldn't have it. We couldn't officially get in there. And so we had to go pull chips out of fish bowls and wherever we could find them uh, and, and cobble them together. And for, for quite a while, um, the, 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 the folks on the top tier, uh, and it's not just the Arts Park, there's a whole stratification sort of thing, um, could not figure out what we were doing and why we were doing it, because these weren't real computers, good heavens. Um, well, they were computer enough for me. They were they're, they're, they're enough hard work, you know, <laughs> and held it. Did Chuck Metal ever come to the Chuck Metal ever what? Come to the club. Uh, I don't think he came to the Homebrew Club. He might have, like, once or so. Might, might have even showed off the pet computer. I know he came by the garage with the early prototypes of the Apple II, and I brought a bunch of colored demos and all this, and eh, he went back to Commodore and said, no, you don't want color, you don't want fancy good keyboards, you don't want slots of lots, you just want the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest that anyone will take, black and white and text and a crinkly keyboard, and it's all price. But then again, they had to build in a TV set, and our Apples at least used your home TV, which was free. We were the cheapest. Good Lord, I didn't have the money for an assembler. I suspect there were a lot like me. When you bought a microprocessor, you got a little card with it that said for each instruction what ones and zeros it would create for you, or what hexadecimal you would create. And, you know, I'm definitely one of those big hexadecs for, for base 16, not base 8. And, uh, I mean, 16 is a good number. 4, it's to the 4th. The 4 is a good number. 3 is less, less binary to begin with, 2 to the 3rd. <laughs> you know, and uh, so... <laughs> and, and a byte is a... 256, that's 2 hexadecimal digits. So, anyway, so hexadecimal... Every time I go to a hotel, I look at the room number, and the room number tells me if it's a good room or not. I don't look at the inside. <laughs> I didn't care less, and last time I went, my friend got the good room. What was it? It was 427. Two squared and three to the third. Pissed me off by 429. But uh, I would, uh, yeah, but the microprocessor would come so hard. Well, a lot of people, I'm sure, in the club were like myself, could not afford a time-sharing account to run an assembler so you could type in your machine language program and get the ones and zeros back. We had to do it by hand on paper. The entire code, all the way up through the Apple II, Never ever was written anything but totally in my own hand, right down to the ones and zeros that went into memory that made the processor do its stuff. And that's the sort of that's the way things were back then. Gotta remember, I mean, there were this was a world when uh, um, things were kind of tiny. I couldn't even put our they didn't even have a, a prom. The largest prom I knew of was a 256 by 4 bit, two chips to add up to 256 bytes to put into the Apple One, just so you could type on a keyboard. 